Hey guys, Henry here, and today we're going to be looking at what is the keto flu and how long does it last? Well, I'm currently going through it right now. I'm a bit of a strange one. I've been on the carnivore diet for about two weeks now, and I really only started experiencing the symptoms of the keto flu less than a week ago. So, what is the keto flu and how and what are some of the symptoms and how long does it last? Well, okay, well let's go and have a quick look at this. Okay, we're here at a blog called Intermountain Health, and we'll just have a quick read of what it says. Your body's response to entering ketosis can often mimic symptoms of the flu, thus the name keto flu. Essentially, you're feeling the symptoms of withdrawal from carbs. Your body burns carbohydrates or glucose for energy by default. So, switching to a fat burning process confuses your body. When carb intake is drastically reduced, such as on the ketogenic diet or carnivore diet, your body is depleted of stored glucose and instead turns to burning fatty acids for energy. This is the metabolic process of ketosis. Okay, so what are some of the symptoms? And what are some of the symptoms I'm currently going through? Well, it says stomach aches and pains. Well, I was very fortunate. I never experienced that. Nausea? Well, last week, or earlier this week, I should say, I had some mild dose of feeling nausea, and that was probably in the early part of the week. It was like Monday, I think it was. But it only lasted probably a day. Then there was dizziness, which happened on the same day. Sugar cravings. I was okay with the sugar cravings up until a couple of days ago. Then I started really craving it. Well, it's funny. It, Happy Easter, by the way. My wife asked me the other day, would you like me to get you a dark chocolate egg for Easter? I looked at her and I smiled and I said, no, thanks, Dal. I think I'll just have the real sauce, the real egg, not the fake one. Anyhow. Sugar cravings started hitting really badly the other day, and this is the first time it's actually started hitting. And that's okay, I will get over it. Cramping. Yes, I have been suffering cramping for years and years and years and years. So I have naturally got a bottle of magnesium in my cupboard at all times that I use pretty much on a regular basis. And so I have been suffering cramps, and I found that this morning when I woke up, muscles were doing little twinges and I could feel it coming on so I quickly got up and had some magnesium tablets. You may need some electrolytes or something that's actually going to help you out with that and usually electrolytes contain magnesium, potassium and sodium. Now for me magnesium is perfectly fine I can have that. Sodium is perfectly fine I usually put copious amounts of salt into my food anyway so that's not an issue. The one thing I do have an issue with is potassium. Because I'm on blood pressure tablets, I have to be careful on how much potassium I actually have in my diet. In fact, it recommends that I don't have any potassium in my diet. So what, until I can get my blood pressure down and I no longer need those tablets, I can't take potassium. So it's kind of pointless me having electrolytes right now because if I try to take them, I will in fact probably harm myself or do more harm than good. I, for me, I find magnesium and I usually get what's called active magnesium and because it's a more pure form of magnesium and it does a much better job. All right, so what else does it have? Irritability. Oh, I haven't really been suffering that, which is good. Diarrhea and constipation. Well, constipation's not great. Trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. Now, I didn't know anything about that. There's been a symptom of going keto or should I say going, going, being in ketosis, until today. I mean, I had been suffering for the past probably three days where I've been waking up after only about three to four hours sleep and then not being able to get back to sleep again. And that was really annoying. <laughs> and I'm, I'm you know, really tired right now because of that, you know, because I find that only three or four hours sleep just isn't quite enough. So we also have poor focus and concentration. Well, yes, 
but I'm not sure whether the poor focus and concentration is due to a lack of sleep or whether or not it's because of the keto flu. It could be a combination of the two. And brain fog. Oh yes, right now I am seriously suffering brain fog. Now another thing we also too is that that is something that's been really bad. And I, and I do put it down to the fact that I haven't been sleeping much. All right, now, how long does it last? Let's go and have a look at how long it lasts. Symptoms of the keto flu generally begin within the first day of two of removing carbs. For the average person, the keto flu can last a week or less. But in extreme cases, the keto flu can last up to a month. However, depending on your genetics, you may never experience the keto flu. Well, if you've never experienced the keto flu, you guys are blessed. I'm not liking it because, as I said, I'm having aches and pains like as if I'm actually having flu-like symptoms, which is not cool. However, I know there is an end in sight. Now, this can take up to a month. Well, and I'm suspecting it says it will last less than a week for most people, but it could last up to a month. Now, I can prepare myself for the potential for a month or more, especially with how much how bad my fatty liver is right now. Anywho, and also notice with the carnivore diet that when you eat more meat and protein and fat, you don't tend to eat as often. Now, I had gone to a point where I had been eating the carnivore diet and what I've been doing is I used to eat only one meal a day, but then I would snack really ferociously afterwards because I found one meal a day was like not quite enough. So I really eat a lot of snacks. But since going on the carnivore diet, I had, I was eating, I went from having one meal a day, to having two meals a day, but I wasn't losing weight because my body was going, uh, no, you're trying to trick me into thinking you're eating twice a day now. I'm going to hold on to this until such times as I'm convinced. So I wasn't actually losing any weight. I got to a point where I lost my four kilos, and then I just stagnated there. So I decided to, two things. I re decided to reduce my fat intake and drop one of those meals. So I went back to being an OMAD diet, which is one meal a day. So I went back to doing one meal a day and I stopped snacking because I don't feel like snacking due to the fact that carnivore diet, the carnivore diet is so filling. And because the carnivore diet is so filling, I was able to reduce the quantity size of how much I eat. Now, I just want to show you. This is what I had for dinner tonight. I made two batches of these up. Now, this is a carnivore quiche. Essentially, scrambled egg mixture with mints. I got some mints and I fried that up in a fry pan, salt and pepper on it, let it cool down, threw it in the, in the scrambled egg mixture, then cooked them in some muffin pans. Normally, I could have gone through at least nine or even 10 of these in one sitting. That wouldn't have been a problem. But since starting the carnivore diet, I have literally reduced the amount I could eat. I only ate six and I struggled to get through the sixth one tonight. As I said in the past, I could have easily eaten nine and still gone back for more. When it had vegetables and stuff in it, it was never filling. I think the next time I'll add bacon and ham to it. And people will say, real men don't eat quiche. Well, I have to say, real men would eat this one because it's got a real meaty flavor. So they'd love this one. All right, so let's go recap what we learned about the keto flu. It really, our bodies get used to having carbs. So when we have reduced our carbs down to practically nothing, we go into burning fatty acids, which is what our ketosis is. We can end up getting symptoms such as stomach aches, nausea, dizziness, sugar cravings, cramping, muscle soreness, irritability, diarrhea, constipation, trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, poor focus and concentration, brain fog. Now, the next thing also too, how long does it last? Most cases less than a week, in extreme cases up to a month. But be aware it does go away. 
And that's the thing we need to remember. That's the thing we need to look forward to. We just push through until we get there. Now, another thing I will say before we get going is that movement, keep moving, keep exercising. That is the key to success. You don't exercise, you don't move a lot, you don't get up and walk around a bit more. And even using some exercises where you're using maybe push-ups or something, where you're having to use your muscles, you won't be quite as successful. Now, if you like this video, please consider smashing the like button, as well as subscribing also hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we upload more videos. Hey, while you're at it, why not consider sharing? Also, leave a comment down below and let me know how you're going on your carnivore diet or keto diet, whichever one you happen to be on. Or if you're beginning to just decide on which one you're going to do if you haven't already started. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.